I'm Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, and thank you for tuning in to another program of A Greater Understanding. Today, we've got a very interesting topic. For those of you outside the United States, I don't know if you celebrate it, but uh, on June the 21st here in the States, we celebrate what is called Father's Day. And it shouldn't really be called Father's Day, and we're going to find out why, but we're going to study... This is the question. Anyone can be a father, but thoughts on being a dad. Stay tuned and see you in a bit. Well, thank you for tuning in to another program of A Greater Understanding. I'm Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, and I know you waited all week <laughs> to see us live. Now, those of you that don't see us live, you can go to A Greater Understanding Genesee, and that is on the uh, YouTube channel, Greater Understanding Genesee, and subscribe when you go to it. Uh, we're building up the subscriptions. We certainly do a thank you for your support, and uh, we're moving on to the world on the true gospel, the knowledge of the true gospel, and that's what a greater understanding is all about. Greater understanding is that when you study the word of God, you create in your mind and your heart a greater understanding of him. And we know who him is. That's Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And at the end of this program, you'll all have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because that's really the big reason of a greater understanding and the reason that I was called into the ministry many years ago. Now, um, just want to let you know, you do know about a greater understanding, Genesee. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be here on the also the Rumble channel of Omni Orbis Church, um, a greater understanding. And uh, you do know about that. Every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, as long as there's breath in, breath in my lungs, uh, you will hear Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa, myself, with Cities of Hope Ministry. Now, tonight, this, this afternoon, I do a Bible study. And the Bible study, uh, the Bible study is uh, done at the Flint Public Library in the great city of Flint, Michigan. And this is being sent to the world from the east side of Flint, which is the powerhouse of the whole city of Flint. I know the west side thinks they are, the north side thinks they are, uh, the south side thinks they are, but the east side is where everything happened. Uh, it's, it's a section where there were all blue-collar workers for God Motors, which is General Motors, which is, doesn't exist anymore. And now it looks like a war zone, but the thing is, there's going to be new homes built. So the, east, the, the uh, Flint Public Library is where we're going to do the Bible study on the auspices of Mount Hermon Ministries. And uh, a lot of you know, uh, if you've listened to our program before, that I was the founder of Mount Hermon Ministries many years ago. And we do the Bible study. So if you dial 701-802-5180. And why do I say dial? Because it's a on-the-phone Bible study for the whole world. 701-802-5180. And then when requested, put the access code, ladies and gentlemen, of 6344132 pound. That's 6344132 pound. And tonight, from 5.30 till 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we're going to discuss this topic because some of you don't really understand who our Lord and Savior is. And the question is, is Jesus God or just a good man? And uh, we're going to study many scriptures in the book of John and also the book of Mark, the Gospels. Uh, and is Jesus, a, just, is Jesus God or just a good man? And some of you think, you pastors and you believers out there, 
think that Jesus never stated in the word of God that he was God. Uh, you'll learn about that tonight, uh, 5.32, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time by dialing 7101-802-5180. And then when requested, put 6344132 pound. Now, also, uh, Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifo City's Hope Ministry does a radio program. And you can go on your smartphone. Uh, many of you have a smartphone. There's about 5 billion of you to the almost 8 billion plus people on this planet called Earth that was created by a creator. And uh, that, that anywhere on the planet that you say the city of Flint, Michigan, we know they know where it is. Saginaw, they don't know. Detroit, maybe. But you want to uh, go to your smartphone and look for the link uh, WSNL Christian Talk Radio, WSNL Christian Talk Radio, and go to any of the search engines, Google, DuckDuck, all these search engines that are here, there's many of them, and find that link. Then take that link, take that link and share it with your family, share it with your friends, and share it with your enemies. And you say, well, Reverend Lawrence at El Cifo, Cities Hope Ministry, why share it with my enemies? Well, if you share it with your enemies, your enemies just might one day become a brother or sister in Christ. Remember that. We have an enemy, which is called Lucifer, became Satan, which means the accuser of the brethren, and all his cohorts. That is the enemy. All of us are not enemies. You may think you're an enemy with the person across the street just because he didn't uh, cut his grass the right way. Uh, or he didn't plant the right trees, or he didn't say good morning to you or good afternoon or good evening when you came home. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take that link and share it with everyone that you know. And we're going to talk about interesting topic um, on Saturday the 17th and possibly Sunday at 1 o'clock, Saturday the 17th at noon. And this is the statement of faith that you're all going to hear. And it says, the sole basis of our belief, beliefs in the Bible, God's infallible written word, the 66 books of the Old Testament and the New Testament, we believe that it is was uniquely, verbally, and fully inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that's the spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, one of the trinities. And that it was written without error. Listen to that, written without error. And that is, it is errant, which means it doesn't have error in the original manuscript. It is the supreme and final authority in all matters on which it speaks. And that's speaking of everything and everyone in our life. And that will be on June the 17th at noon. And also on June the 18th, sometimes at one o'clock. Now, Today, we're going to talk about a very important question, very important question, and that question is, anyone can be a father, but thoughts on being a dad. Now, what does that mean? Well, a father, any of us can be a father. A man can uh, inseminate and fertilize the eggs of a woman. And then a child becomes born. That is a father. But a dad is one that cares, nurtures, educates, and teaches his children. We're celebrating on June the 21st here in the States what is called Father's Day. It should be called Daddy's Day. Daddy's Day. And I just want to tell you a little story. My first marriage, I had two stepchildren, but yet they're my children. Your dad is the one that raises you. And uh, my wife then was uh, Brenda Wilson. And she married me and became Brenda Lee Sifa, S-E-F-A. She had two children at the time. One was Brandy, and Brandy was one and a half years old when I started, uh, met, met her, their, their mother, and Daniel was four and a half years old. 
Brenda would not allow me because of what she thought she was going to collect, and I don't know if she did. She may have. Um, past due child support from her ex-husband. Um, the thing is, she didn't collect it that I have knowledge of, but she allowed me. We were living in Oakland County then, and what you do is she allowed me to change the name of our two children um, and change the name to Sifa legally through the court system. And that was the probate court of Oakland County. We were living in Oakland County at the time. And I remember we went to the probate judge. And just before the probate judge was ready to sign the decree that he had, changing Brandy Elizabeth to Brandy Elizabeth Sifa, and changing Daniel Leroy to Daniel Leroy Sifa. So he asked a question, the judge. And I remember that day very clearly. And it's going to prove a point about fathers and dads. She, he asked Daniel, son, young man, why do you want to change your name to Sifa? Now, he was four and a half when I met his mother and we were uh, cohabitating. We eventually got married. Uh, it was on Valentine's Day, February the 14th, 1987. We were married till 2000, June of 2000. And um, June 29th, to be exact, 2000, when the divorce decree was put down. But they asked Daniel, why do you want to change your name to Sifa? And he said, well, I want my name to be what? The Sifa because I went by Sifa all my life. Then the, the judge looked at Brandy and says, young lady, why do you want to change your name to Sifa? And she specifically said, because I want my name the same as my dad. Because I want my name to be the same as my dad. Now, she was one and a half years old, and the difference between those two statements was Daniel was a little older, and children can be, how would you say, impressionable until the age of six, like 90% of everything that they're going to be happens by the age of six. Brandy was one and a half years old. She wanted her name to be the same as her dad. Think about that. Think about it. Many of you are from mixed, blended marriages. You have children from other uh, spouses. It could be a, a father or mother. And uh, blended marriages is very difficult to raise. But if you care about your children like Father God, as we're going to talk about, uh, then they will call you dad and not father. Now, let's look at uh, the definition. We want to look at the definition of father. In the Bible, it talks about, and we're going to go to this here. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about um, in the dictionary. Okay, it says Abba, Abba or Bayi in Arabic, Abba is in Hebrew, is the defining term for father in the Aramaic language spoken by Jesus and Paul as an intimate term to characterize their personal relationship with God. Do you notice that what I've read, though, that uh, in um, the Hebrew Bible... You know, that's the, that's the, John Wilson chiming in, not God. Okay, the, the Hebrew Bible never refers to God as Father or Daddy. Or, no. And so that, 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 that personal touch, basically, was because, you know, Christ, you know, he was the Son, and that's we, he wanted us to refer to him like that, you know. So that that's kind of that's kind of a tie-in there about Father's Day and Daddy's Day, basically. Because, yeah. I mean, that was like, it's a very much very similar to be, be Daddy in English, you that's know. That's very yeah. true. John, very true. And related to Hebrew, A-K-K-A-D-I-N, Akkadan, which means Abu or father. Akkadian. 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 Yep. And that's in the Semitic languages. Now, Arabic calls Abi, Be'i. Um, there's different different dialects, what they call, but, but Abba is the relationship that Jesus had with his father, his dad. And if you go to Romans, and I want to show you because it's all about the Word of God. Go to Romans, Romans 8, 
12. And it starts with the word therefore. And many times you've heard, if you've been on the program of any Bible study or any program, radio program, I'll always say you've got to know what the therefore is there for. And usually it's explained. Brethren, and he's talking to others in the faith of Christianity. We are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. He's saying we're, we're not debtors to the flesh. We're not to live after the flesh. Those that are living in the physical of the flesh are not having a relationship with their father, their daddy. And, and, and Abba Father, is a good. he's a good daddy. 13, it says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. The flesh dies. When we buried my mother, March 11th, 2022, her flesh was put into the grave, but her spirit or soul went to God. When we buried my father, now my mother was Nabiya Sifa, also Nabiya Hamzi. When we buried my father, Nassib Joseph Sifa, on March, he died past March 7th, 1991, his flesh went into the grave. And we're talking about here, what does it say? For if she, you live after the flesh, he shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live forever eternally. 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. God is their daddy. He's my daddy. He's a good daddy. 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we call Abba, Father, or Bey in Arabic. In 16, it says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you're living in a blended family, and those of you in the States that are going to be celebrating Father's Day on June the 21st, 2023, celebrate it as Father's Day. And if that father actually nurtured you, taught you, educated you, he's your daddy. 17. And if children, then heirs. Heirs to what? Heirs to the family in the physical and heirs to the family in the heavenly, in the spiritual. If ye, if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Glorified. It's important to understand that. Glorified is glowing, is shining light on situations. You see, us as Christians, those of you that are not Christians, because there's many of you Muslims, there's Baha'i, there's Buddhists, there's atheists that listen to our program of a greater understanding here at All Points TV. On the radio program, WSNL 600 AM, Christian Talk, and the Bible Study, which is every Tuesday night from 5.30 to 7 that I do from the Flint Public Library, you'll find out that you that are living in blended families or those are your children. There's many children that only have fathers. Many children don't have a relationship with their father. And that continues. That person, that male person in their family, uh, their father, but when that transition from father to dad happens, then they're heirs to what? Heirs to the family, inheritors of the family, and rightful inheritors, and in God's world or God's kingdom, they're heirs to the kingdom of heaven. And that's important. Now, um, it's important to understand, again, anyone can be a father, and these are thoughts on being a dad. 
I have never called anyone daddy. Well, I have. I have a daddy. I have a physical daddy, Nassib Joseph Sifa. And I started calling him daddy from day one when I was born October 5th, 1953, right here in the great city of Flint, Michigan at St. Joseph Hospital. He was my daddy. He taught me things that only a daddy can do. You see, several years ago, a friend of mine named George and I prayed all the time, but don't feel like I have, this is what he said, pray all the time, but don't feel like I have a connection with God. I don't think I have a relationship with him. And why would George say that? Well, I said, have you ever thought about referring to God as Abba? I replied. Later that evening, as I prayed, the Holy Spirit brought our conversation to mind, to him. But this time, that question was being asked of me. Unable to take my own advice, I preceded my prayers with Heavenly Father, Abba Father. You see, as a kid, I would watch the show Good Times. Some of you in the States watch the show Good Times and think, I know our family is missing James, but Flo is doing just a great job that even without him, the Evans would be all right. You see, although we were poor, but yet we had a a grocery store, we never did without. We didn't lack. We, it says, we having a father that was absent from work had a daddy because we go see him in the store. Now, let's look at what we can do to transcend from father to daddy. Forgiveness is the big reconciler. Forgiveness is the big reconciler in these 66 books that was canonized for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to testify who Jesus Christ was and is. You see, I met my father when I was born. And I remember many times here in the great city of Flint, Michigan, my father would come home from the grocery store very late, My mom at the time was 17. My dad was 36, 37, 37 years old. And um, it's quite a few years between my dad and my mom. And my dad, because he wanted to see his son, that was me, Lawrence Adele Sifa, would put me in the car with my mom and drive me around the city. At that time, there was a lot of lights, neon lights and things. And he'd say, look at the lights, look at the lights. And I I was... (laughs) I was happy to be with my daddy. He took time out after he got home, probably 10, 11 o'clock at night till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. I didn't have any school to wake up to because I was 1, 2, 3, 4 years old until my brother Mark, Floyd Sifa, came and ruined it all (laughs) between my daddy and my mom. So it's important to forgive the big reconciler. Forgive the person in your life that was a father. Forgive him that he wasn't a dad. And through forgiveness, it'll help you to open up your heart. Now, some of your dads, fathers, are not with you, like mine. They've transcended and went to heaven or to the other place to hell because they hadn't received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's what I believe. You can believe what you want, but I will tell you the truth and I'll share it with you at the end of this podcast. As I do every podcast, every radio program and every Bible study and every sermon that I talk about and every person that I meet, I give you all the opportunity and them all the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be able to call God, Abba, Father. Because without forgiveness, 
You have a root of bitterness and you can't make that transition. So forgive even if that father that you had has passed and went and transcended into the eternity, the spiritual world. Forgive him. You say, Reverend Lawrence, how do I do that? Well, you get a cheer out. A cheer can be vacant because then you tell your father, please sit down in the spirit. And you look at your father sitting there and say, I forgive you. Just like Jesus forgave all those that crucified him when he said, Father, Abba, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You see, your father was raised by a father or maybe not a father. See, my father, my daddy, Nassim Joseph Sifa, he was 33 days old when his father, Yusuf Sifa, took him to Lebanon. And then his father passed at three years old when my dad was, my father was, daddy was three years old. So he was raised like an orphan by his mother and also a great aunt. Uh, the great aunt lived in Jadidi Artuz, Damascus, Syria, where my grandmother sent my daddy to grow up. And he missed his mom, but he also missed his dad. You see, when you forgive, you release that person or father from what they had harmed you. And you allow them to become your daddy. Even after they've transcended in the spirit, you can do that. And if you need help with that, you can give me a call. Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry at 513-512-3200. Or go to our website, citiesofhopeministry.com, where you can leave a message. Or you can go to Cities of Hope Ministry, Ministries at Gmail. Dot com and leave a message and email me and I will answer all my emails eventually. What are some other things? There's barrier breakers for those of, that are fathers that want to become dads. See, when we apologize to our children, apologize for the way we treat them as a father rather than a dad. We teach them to go against their natural prideful instincts. We show them being their authority figure as the father, becoming a dad, doesn't hinder us from humbling ourselves, apologizing, and recognize, reconciling with them. You see, they get to see us weak and vulnerable, and this results in the wall built on pride and the ego to come tumbling down and get rid of that barrier with your children. You all should become daddies. Grace is another powerful thing besides very breakers. Our apologies give our children the opportunity to practice grace. That's what Father God gives us, grace. Again, this isn't a natural response to being hurt or offended. Grace is not a natural response. So they have to tap into their power source. It's deeply impactful to see our kids operating in the power of the Spirit. That's what you want. And offer grace to their imperfect father and allow him to become dad. That grace allows us to come up from under the yoke, and the yoke is that which pulls you, of perfection and encourages our children to not idolize us as we continually point to Jesus, the only perfect one. You want to know how that perfect one is? Go to the book of John, and I want you to hear this. The book of John was written by John, one of the sons of Zebedee. James was his brother, not the James that's in the Bible. It's good to know the history of the Bible. And also they call it... Um, 
exit Jesus. Now you go to John, John 1, and you're going to find something here. John 1, 14. And I'm going to read that for you. John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh, who is that? Jesus, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, his glowing, his shining light was the first thing that God created after he created the heavens and the earth. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, Abba, Father. Forgiveness is also redemptive. We're looking at these, these things that we need to do to transcend from father to daddy. Forgiveness is redemptive. When we offer sincere apologies to our children, and believe me, our children not only hear us, but they watch us. It makes it easier for them to forgive our offenses as not being there at their baseball game or their football game or watching them when they first did that first speech at school or being with them at their birthdays. This forgiveness not only destroys the wall of hostility between us, but it redeems a relationship, a relationship. Which is a token of forgiveness, is deep, a deep well of healing we can endlessly continue to draw from, a deep well. Anytime in the word that it talks about water, it's the Holy Spirit. I make myself, I made myself available to my children, which left me vulnerable. My encounters with them are often flowered with laughter and fun. My daughter Brandy and my son Daniel, who has transcended and went to heaven, my daughter Brandy is still with us. Hi, Brandy, I love you. And every time I hear in my heart, in my mind, when you said, I want my name to be the same as my dad, to that probate judge, it brings tears to my eyes. And every night before bed, my son would say, good night, daddy. My daughter would say, good night, daddy. I love hearing that word. And to this day, it overwhelms me with joy, daddy. And you know, Father God loves to hear your voice, Abba, Abba, Father. And in Arabic, Bayi, Bayi. I get this daddy ringing thing wrong a lot, though. And I have earned the right to be called daddy because I was there for all my children. I'm learning that my son called me dad, not because I always get it right, but because he knew the real me and he felt safe in doing so. As for my own journey with the word dad, I wake up every morning and say, Good morning, Abba. I need you today. Send me opportunities. Opportunities for your kingdom. You see, when you become a follower of Jesus Christ and you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you no longer belong to yourself. You belong to him. And you need to get it right that he's your Daddy, your Abba Father. Now, when we, as children of God, call him Abba Father, I believe that he stands up and he dances over us, it says in the Word of God. He doesn't just uh, sit at the right hand of the Father but he jumps up and down. So, Abba Father 
is an acronym acronym of the first letters of the band member's first name. And it says here that Father, a title of Abba. A title of honor, giving ver- variously to the deity, which is God, the New Testament, to bishops, patriarchs, and many Eastern churches and Jewish scholars in the Ptolemaic period. Um, the origin, the origin of Abba story began in Sweden. For those of you that are Swedish. More than five decades ago, in June 1996, Bojern Uthras, born 1945, met Benny Anderson, born 1946, for the first time. Bojern was a member of the Hutney Singers, a very popular folk music, and you would know that, Swedish, group, while Benny played keyboards in Sweden, its biggest pop group of the 1960s. So why are ABBA so good? Another factor is what made ABBA sound like ABBA is the sheer beauty of the textures. The group loved wall of sound, principle pioneered by Phil Spector. And you have to be Sweden to understand this. And their studio engineer, Michael Tivolt, created a double track studio sound to ensure that the band's sound was both polished and hugs. The quartet, and you'll like this, released their ninth and final studio album, Voyage in November 2021 and the following May, all four ABBA members attended the premiere of their virtual concert concert series in London. When we got back together, the studio, I had no idea what to expect. Oh, here. Good morning. This is Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa with Cities Vote Ministry, and you're on the air with a great understanding. Who's calling? Uh, Sifa, Pastor Sifa, this is Dr. Richard Allinger. Dr. Allinger, how are you today? Well, I was uh, tuning in and wanting to ask you the question. After I had met your dear mother uh, uh, a couple of years ago before she went home to be with the Lord, Nabia Sifa. Yes, uh, Nabia Sifa, that's I, correct. You told me that she used to like to tune in to Andrew Womack on his television broadcast, and I was wondering what was it about Andrew Womack's uh, pr- uh, presentations that she liked? The thing that she liked about Andrew Womack, because he was for real. Andrew Womack is a man of God. There are some preachers out there and pastors uh, that are not, but he, he appeals to those that are hungry for the Lord, okay? And okay. Andrew Womack was an interesting character, but Dr. Richard, I got a question for you. Yeah. Was your father a father or a daddy? Because the question that we're looking at today on a greater understanding is anyone can be a father, but thoughts on being a dad. Was your Da- father, a father or a dad? Uh, well, my. Uh, I don't mean to put you on the yeah, spot. Well, I call him my dad because you know Jesus said you should call no man upon earth your father. Yes. And you know the Lord from heaven is the father to the fatherless. Yes. And that, that's one thing. If you remember the late David Atwell, thirty-eight-year-old man, he said that his dad died when he was just a year old, and the Lord after he got saved, had been the father to the fatherless, and he was my father. But my dad, I'm one of 11 kids, and mom and dad got married back in 1941, just before Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. And then dad came home 
from the war, and mom and dad had 11 war boom babies. I'm now, one of 11, seven sisters, and I'm one of four boys. Yes. And all of my 11 brothers and sisters looked up, highly respected my dad, uh, and because he was a dad. I mean, He, he wasn't was just a father. Dad. He was a dad. Yeah, he was a dad. We all loved him so much. And you had 11 children, in, yes, 11, 11 siblings. Children. Now, in your family... How many children do you have between you and Denise? That's your wife. Uh, well, Denise and I have uh, two boys and two girls, and we have 20 biological grandchildren and two great-grandsons, and we have yet to have any uh, great-granddaughters. Now, question. Did and does all your children call you father or dad? Uh, well, Christy, my oldest one, just texted me, and she called me daddy-o. Daddy-o. Yeah. Call you dad. And you called your father actually dad. Yeah. But it's hard for me to call my dad father, even though he's honorable and deserves to be honored and respected. Like, you know, the Ten Commandments number five is honor your father and mother, I think. You yeah, know? but Dr. So, Richard? So, Dr. Dr. Richard? called my dad dad. Yeah, but he lived up to being a dad. He was yes, there he was. with you he and there for you, and he cared about his children. Right? right? Right. But a father, the reason Jesus didn't call his father, he called him Abba, father, which means daddy. Do you know why? Because there was an intimate relationship with Jesus and his father, Father God. Do you know there was an intimate relationship with you and your father? Yes, right? I always spoke with you in our Bible studies uh, about... Uh, how we should always remember to call God our Father because there is an intimate union we have as being adopted into his family through the sacrifice and blood of his son that we should always call him Father instead of just God because God could mean a lot of different things in this modern post-Christian, post-modern Asia we live in. But calling the Lord from heaven and his father, Father, uh, I think he deserves to be called our Father who is in heaven. That's how Jesus taught us to pray. Abba, Father. Yeah, Abba, Father. Yes. And you know, before Jesus, I don't think anybody called God Father or Abba, that, Father. That, that's, that's the big uh, era uh, in all due respect to the Muslims, they do not know God intimately as their father. That's right. And there's a billion Muslims, too. And I'm just praying uh, to learn how to evangelize Muslims lovingly. Dr. Richard, there's many Muslims that listen to our program, A Greater Understanding, from all over the world. Every Tuesday from 11 to 12, Eastern Standard Time. There's many Buddhists that listen to our program and greater understanding. There's many atheists that listen. And you know, we love everyone. We love everyone. And we're not about to take this 14-pound Bible and hit them on the head. We're here to preach and tell the gospel of the truth. Now, Dr. Richard, your children, do they call you father or daddy? Uh, dad. Oh, do you know that 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 June the twenty first of this year is Father's Day? Oh, it is. Yeah, and it should be called Daddy's Day. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, my family because we had such wonderful parents. They were married seventy years almost, and they have about one hundred thirty eight grandkids. Yeah. Uh, right now, to cherish their memory with their eleven kids. So every Mother's Day and Father's Day, that's a very special day. And we all go out, all of my family, because it's a big family. We drive out to Mount Holly State Park, and they don't allow alcohol drinking in there. And everything's uh, controlled in, in order. Yes. And it's beautiful out there in May for a Mother's Day picnic and a Father's Day picnic in June. And we are, there are plenty of parking out there, swings and slides for all the kids, and uh, a lake. Dr. Richard. For kids to walk on. Dr. Richard. Do that every Mother's Day and Father's Good. Day. Good. Dr. Richard, I've got something I'd like to mention. Now listen to this. 
the wonderful invocations of God being our Abba Father, okay, it is likely that most of us Christians have heard God referred to as Abba Father throughout their lives, in prayers, at church, while reading the Bible, in quiet time, and etc. However, God's title of Abba Father is only found referenced in the Bible three separate times. Did you know that? In the passages of Romans 8.15, in the passage of, of the Gospel of Mark 14.36, and in Galatians that was written by Paul or Saul of Tarsus, which all refer to in the New Testament. Only two speakers uttered these words in these passages, and that was Jesus and the Apostle Paul. So why would the title mentioned so sparingly in Scripture be so monumental in describing not only Jesus and Paul's relationship with God, but our relationship with God as well? Why would that being mentioned so few times? That's a great question, and that's why I've always enjoyed tuning into your program because you bring out uh, facts like this that I've never heard of before. Yeah, I've learned so much. You're such an inspirational Thank you. pastor, teacher. Uh, uh, my response to that is... Yeah, uh, what's your you response? Know, most, uh, Why if it's... It's only mentioned so sparingly. Minimize the things that don't really need to be punctuated or minimized. Or, uh, you know. But see, the fact that it's Abba Father and the importance of what you just pointed out, sometimes... Uh, they, uh, it's, it's might not be intentional, but it's, it may be uh, the, the, the world, the flesh, and the devil uh, working uh, uh, upon the people of God and the Bible expositors not to really uh, uh, maximize that truth and uh, let that truth uh, be radiated through your writings and your right. pen and your study right. and your publications and your speaking. But by you speaking about it right now, Before Father's Day. Now, this name, the this name of God is rich. That's Abba. With meaning and implications for our lives. See, the thing is that God, that's this why this title of God is so important as Abba Father, important to our theology and relationship with him, is because number one, Jesus who's our Lord and Savior, the Good Shepherd, teaches us everything, doesn't he? The everlasting Father, Isaiah said. That's right. The beginning of our exploration into God as Abba Father, let's begin under understanding what Abba means, definition. Abba is the defining term for Father in Aramaic language. And who spoke Aramaic at the time? Was that a... a, a a high form of language? Uh, would that be the Nazarene Christ? The Yes. Aramaic was the common language, wasn't it, Dr. Richard? Y- yes. It was a common language, it was a street language, and Jesus spoke and wrote Aramaic fluently because he was communicating with those that need to know God. You see... Yes, I believe he was the greatest teacher and example for us to look to. Okay, now let's look at the three scriptures I mentioned. Mark 14, 36. And those of you who want to get your Bibles out, if you don't have a Bible, give me a call. Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry at 513-512-3200 or contact me at citiesofhopeministries.com at, at gmail.com at gmail.com uh, and uh, leave me a message. Wherever your address is in the world, I'll send you a Bible. Now, Mark 14, 36 says, And he, that's Jesus, said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. He's talking to his father. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but you will. He's talking to his father while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane before he went to the cross. Right, Dr. Richard? Right. Now, Romans 8, 15 says, For... You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. And that was Paul or Saul of Tyrus that wrote the the book of Romans. 
uh, to the Romans. And then Paul also wrote to the Galatians 4 6, Galatians 4 6, the church of Galatia, and said, And because you are sons, see, because you're sons or daughters, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son, Jesus Christ, into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. You see, before we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, or we're looking to God, God put us in our heart to look for him and to receive him. And we have that choice. We have that choice. You see, the scripture from Mark is stated by Jesus, while the verse of Romans and Galatians are shared by Paul or Saul of Tarsus. Both had deep relationships with God, Jesus and Paul, that emerged in miraculous ways, and both met one another in a miraculous way. On the road to Damascus, Jesus or Paul met Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. When he was on the road to Damascus, he became blind, and there was an explosion and a light flashing, and others on that trip with him seen that, but they did not hear Jesus. And when that light flashed and Jesus was speaking to Paul or Saul of Tarsus, Paul or Saul said, Lord, what would you have me do? And he says, and who are you, Lord? And he says, I'm Jesus, the one that you're persecuting, persecuting the church of Jesus Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, persecuting. And he says, well, Lord, what would you have me do? He says, I want you to go to Damascus and wait there, and I will send someone because he was blind. He had to be led there. Someone to lay hands on you for your sight. And it was not only physical sight, but spiritual sight that he had for Abba Father. He had that spiritual sight. And that was Ananias, Ananias that was sent. And can you imagine, Dr. Richard, can you imagine the conversation between God and Ananias and said, Ananias, I want you to go to Damascus and lay hands on Paul or Saul of Tarsus that is blind. And he probably told them, but Lord, do you know that this man kills Christians, persecutes them, puts them in prison, has them stoned? He was holding Stephen's cloak, I heard, when Stephen was stoned um, as the first martyr. And it says, hence, this would explain one reason why they would share the same intimate name for God, which is Abba, that is not mentioned by any of Jesus' disciples or the found in the Old Testament. Abba is not found in the Old Testament. Dr. Richard, yeah. Abba, Father, Abba Father is Jesus and Paul's eyes. Did you know that Jesus was Abba Father to Paul? Well, that's why I tuned into your show. Yeah. And it says, with countless names of God in the Bible, why is Abba Father only referred to by Jesus and Paul? To answer this question, it is more at what Jesus and Paul represent in the Christian faith. And what do they represent? One is the Son of God and Savior for all mankind. That's Jesus. All mankind, even those that would not receive him as their Lord and Savior and have heard the gospel, but reject him. The other was once determined to destroy the belief about Jesus and who he is until Jesus changed his life on that dusty road to Damascus. The two men couldn't be more different in the eyes of those around them, but in the eyes of God, they were created from the same cloth, closer than physical brother, as they had become spiritual brothers for eternity. Their stories display deep connections with God, following guidance to live lives on earth that place them in danger, but facing that danger, knowing God conquers all in the end. Does God conquer all? Yes. Yes. He was tethered to God in a way that no one ever could ever and would ever be able to undo. 
Jesus was God in the flesh, letting the Father speaking through him as he went about his ministry of spreading the word of God to all who would hear and obey. Because of his intimate connection with God in heaven, before he was placed on earth in the flesh, God worked through Jesus' flesh while he was on earth almost 2,000 years ago, shows why Jesus would refer to God as Abba Father. He was tethered to God in a way that no one ever could ever or would ever be able to undo. When he calls God Abba Father in the Garden of Gethsemane in Mark 14, 36, he says it as a way of acknowledging the power of God and the greatness that will come for him through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. This is an expression of humble admiration for his Father, Father God, as well as an intimate request asking of God for God's will to be shown in this cup of sacrifice that Jesus wouldn't ask of anyone but God. Do you know that Paul's encounter with his perspective, with this perspective, changes perspective for life? Paul witnessing his transformation from Christian hater to a lover of Christ was groundbreaking to him. And as he was highly educated, well-to-do man of from Taurus. See, Paul owned a lot, his family owned a lot of real estate. And because they had property, he was able to become a Roman. Two of the four ribbons of the um, ancient scrolls, the translators, two were Paul's relatives. He was taught by Gamaliel, which was the Pharisee of Pharisees, and Paul had money. Paul was a leader of leaders and a Pharisee of Pharisees. And he went on to embark on a ministry that would witness to several churches around what is considered Europe today, including the Church of Rome and Churches of Galatia, where the verses with Abba Father were written. Paul's letter to these churches, or love letters or epistles as they're called, proclaimed to them that they were now all children of God, like he had become they all now had the spirit of Jesus within them, which is the Holy Spirit, as he did and were close to God as Savior because they knew they could not do it themselves, justifying the reason for calling God Abba Father. So as we celebrate Father's Day here in the United States, June 21st, 2023, as you celebrate those fathers, that were daddies and those that were fathers and you forgive them for what they have done. Whether they be here in the, only in the spirit or here in the flesh, go to your father and tell him, Daddy, I forgive you and thank you for being my daddy and thank him for all the things that he has done for you and your family. And you'll be able to receive him as Abba Father, as Father God is. Dr. Richard, yeah. could you, uh, now, usually at the end of the program, what I do is I allow individuals to receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Would you join with me in bowing your head, closing your eyes, as everyone that's watching from all over the world and repeating the words that I say and listen to the words. They're very important. Could you help me? Yes. Okay. Now repeat after me, everyone, and Dr. Richard. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I thank you, I thank you for, a personal faith. for a personal faith. That's a faith between you personally with the Abba Father. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. 
died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. And open your eyes, brothers and sisters. And because I believe it, and because I believe it I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus, As you receive me, Jesus I, receive you I receive you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And all God's children said, amen and amen. 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 Now, if you said that and just got on the narrow path and you've all, you were a follower of Jesus and you want to be on the narrow path because the narrow way is, is difficult. Most people don't find it, but the wide road is, is found by everyone and you fall in the ditch. You said that to get online with Abba, Father. Thank you. And if you said that for the first time and never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you meant it in your heart, because let me tell you, a lot of us will miss heaven by 18 inches from the head to their heart. It is a relationship, a heart issue. It is not a formula or reading a sinner's prayer. It is not just being baptized in water, although all those things are obeying the gospel. But it's important to be a heart issue. You give me a call, Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa at Cities of Hope Ministry at 513-512-3200. Or you go to our email address, citiesofhopeministries at gmail.com and give me your address wherever you are in the world and I'll send you a, a Bible and wherever you are, we'll get you in a good Bible-believing church on this globe so that you will start with this Word of God, these 66 books that were canonized for testifying who Jesus Christ is and testifying to others who He is and witnessing. I'll send you a Bible anywhere you are in the world. Thank you very much for listening to A Greater Understanding. And next, next uh, the 20th, which is one day before Father's Day, uh, Father's Day being the 21st, we are going to we are going to interview a fella that I met. And this fella, um, I met him at Speedway gas station here in Flint, Michigan, actually in Burton. And um, Speedway gas station at the corner of Court Street and Center Road. His name is Steve or Stephen Ross, R-O-S-S, John. Now, John spelled with a J-A-H-N. He's written some gospel songs, and we're going to interview him on the podcast uh, on June the 20th, 2023. That's next week. And uh, bring your questions for him. You're going to hear his song and uh, his testimony of how he was called by God to follow Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, just like Saul of Paul of Tarsus, and just like Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, and just like Dr. Richard Leslie Allinger, probably one of the most renowned and the most renowned historian right now in the last century in this. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next Tuesday from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time to do another, that is the 20th of June, to do another Greater Understanding. You all be blessed. Enjoy those of you that receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and get a hold of me so I can send you your Bible. You all be blessed. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next Tuesday. And thank you, Dr. Richard. to think